Hello, and thank you for taking a few moments to watch and listen to this brief video. Um, one of my subscribers recently sent over a question, or posted a, posted a comment, really, asking my position to be clarified on the issue of once saved, always saved. Do I believe that, and why do I believe that? Uh, the short answer is, yes, I do believe it. Why do I believe that? That's a very complex um, response, or could be a very long response. Not so much complex, it's very simple in concept, in principle, but one could easily, and people probably have, written a book on it. I went over, by the way, to post a response to that comment, or that question, and unfortunately it's disappeared from the video. I can't do that but hopefully this video will suffice for this individual and for others, clarifying it just a little bit. Let's grant that it's always going to be an issue for a lot of people, this idea of once saved, always saved, and other people, some very prominent people, are promoting the, a different view that one can sin and lose one's salvation. Uh, that just certainly is not true. It does not jive with Scripture, with the information that God has provided for us. The New Testament, for one thing, is all about, stop and think about it. The New Testament is all about God reaching out to us. It's God reaching down and offering us salvation. It's him doing everything he can in order to give us the opportunity to be saved. I think part of the part of the conflict comes into this idea of repent and be saved. One would think that's found in scripture. <laughs> well, of course it is. But I guess I got a little bit of a start out of, out of you. The definition, however, of repent and be saved is subject to a variety of interpretations. There are so many people, uh, again, there are pastors of mega churches who have um, enormous congregations and a tremendous worldwide ministry, and they are propagating this misinformation that the Christian can lose one's salvation. But that's not what Scripture tells us at, at all. Stop and think about the bare-bone facts of this. How is one saved? One becomes saved not by doing anything that you think you sh should not be doing, but rather salvation comes through that repentance, yes, but the repentance is not deciding that you're no longer going to do all these sins that you have been doing in your life. That is not the biblical definition in the New Testament of repentance and what it involves. Repentance is along the lines of, remember that God is always the one that initiates your salvation experience. If it was not for him, you wouldn't even think about being saved. This is God the Father in the guise of the role of the Holy Spirit who does this. The Holy Spirit, if you're already saved, we'll talk past tense, the Holy Spirit came to you and he convicted you of your poor, let's put it this way, your poor relationship with God. In an ideal circumstance, when you are really listening to the Holy Spirit, and we all have listened to varying degrees. Some have listened not at all. Others took it right to heart immediately. And then others, it just gradually came in on them. But what the Holy Spirit does is bring you ideally to a point where, as before, you really couldn't have cared less about what God expected from you and what God was offering to you, and whether there really was a heaven, perhaps, much less how you get there, for the most part, people just didn't care or don't care. 
the Holy Spirit comes into the picture, and in the ideal circumstance, he starts convicting you of the fact that God is real, God does exist, eternity is real and forever. And slowly, one way or another, you come to the realization in your heart, not your head, but in your heart. Intellectual belief is not sufficient. Think of the sorcerer in Acts. It might be Acts, my mind is saying chapter 4 or chapter 19, where he believed what the apostles were telling him about Jesus and salvation, but when it really came down to it, it was only a head belief and he was not saved. Now, when the Holy Spirit is convicting you, you come to the knowledge, sobering knowledge, that God is real, heaven is real, eternity is forever, and the Holy Spirit convicting you of sin brings you not to the point where you suddenly say, oh, I'm going to stop all these other sins. I mean, that, that would be by works. That would be you doing that. You saving yourself and saying, oh, man, I ain't never going to sin again. I'm going to spend eternity with God. No, this is, this is different. This is you coming under conviction by virtue of the power of the Holy Spirit working with you and bringing you to that point to a sobering reality where you realize at some point in your life that you are a sinner. You may not use that term sinner, depends on where you are in the faith, but you come to a realization that you've really let down God. You don't deserve to go to heaven. You have sinned so much, and God is so good. And this is a realization that the Holy Spirit brings unto you, where it's not just head knowledge again, but it's you really coming under conviction that God is good, God is perfect. And man, I've let him down so much. I am such a sinner, I never realized. And, and probably at some point in time, you, you say to him, maybe you drop down on your knees, maybe you stand and lift your hands in the air, but wh however you do it, whatever physical manifestation surrounds this turning point in eternity for you, you say to God, Almighty God, I suddenly realize how foul, how evil I am. I have let you down in so many ways. Oh, my Father in heaven, the way I have lived is so disgusting. Forgive me, Lord. Father in heaven, Father in heaven, I reach out to you and, and I beg for your forgiveness. Oh, is this what Jesus is about? Father, save me in Jesus. Jesus died for me. I, I, I accept his gift to me. Father, save me. I seek forgiveness in the name of Jesus. I'm going to trust him for my salvation. And when you are saved, that is a process that you go through. Now, you may not repeat these things literally or in substance. It's going to depend on your personality, how you express it, but it's coming under conviction. It's being sorry for the way that you have lived before God. And it's turning away from that. That's repentance. That's repentance. It's not saying I'm never going to sin again. Rather, it's saying, Father, I've loved, let you down. And Father, I want to live my life for you. And that's not lordship salvation. That's just saying, Father, I'm sorry how I've lived. And I'm reaching out. I'm apologizing. And I'm reaching out for forgiveness in Jesus Christ because I have heard that he is my Savior and he died for my sins. And that's, what again, what it's all about. I'm repeating myself now. It's coming under conviction by the Holy Spirit, and then it's being apologetic. It's reaching out to God, telling him you're sorry for the way that you have lived, and not just mouthing the words. If you turn this into some kind of prayer for people to recite, it, it, that's a bad thing to do. That's a bad thing to do. This is, we're talking about sincere 
sincerely coming from your heart, Father, I am so sorry for the way that I have lived. And I do ask for salvation in Jesus. And what happens then, the next step, is that the Holy Spirit indwells you at that point. You are saved in that instant, and the Holy Spirit indwells you at that point, and that is the seal for eternity. Ephesians 1.13 And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. Will you ever sin again? Sure you will. Sure you will. Unless you drop dead right then, you're going to go through life and there's going to be many more, more times when you sin. Remember, this is a growth process. Learning to live a life that's promising, um, excuse me, that, that's pleasing to God Almighty and our Lord Jesus Christ. It's a process. Thumb through the New Testament scriptures and you see letters being written to churches that were comprised of a lot of different kinds of people spiritually. Some were just pew sitters. They were there, they were going through the motions, they made an intellectual decision, or their friends were there, so they went to be with their friends. It's a social time. Or they're saved, but they're just brand new in the faith. And so many of these letters that were written to the early church, these were letters of encouragement and instruction, and instruction leading these people to learn how to live in a way that is pleasing to God. Did they still sin? Of course they did. But remember, they were saved by faith in Jesus. What is faith? Faith is trust. You have that chair you're sitting in. Didn't you ex express faith in sitting down on that chair? And you had faith that the chair was going to support you? Well, of course you did, and, and of course it did. That's what faith is all about. It's trust. It's trusting in Jesus. And if Jesus were, were, were to, having done all he's done, and then you turn to him in faith, trusting him for your salvation, do you really think Jesus, Almighty God, do you really think he would betray your trust by letting you down and letting you die in some future sin? Of course not. He is not going to do that. There's no way whatsoever. Salvation is given by God. When you are saved, you are also, remember this, you are also adopted into his family. They're saved and adopted into his family. He becomes, in a very real, literal sense, your perfect heavenly father. Can you think of any passage of scripture where God says that he will throw you out of his family, that he will disown you as a son or a daughter? Well, of course you haven't. So if you haven't done it up to this point, then I suggest that if you're under conviction, if the Holy Spirit led you here and you are not saved, that if you're feeling genuine sorrow, repentance, you want to change things around, you're going to be living a type of life where you think, what would God want me to do? What does God want me to do? Oh, Father, I have failed you in so many times. That's the important thing. That's the important thing, that you recognize that you have failed God and you know that you need to be forgiven that. And the only way that you can be forgiven is to trust in Jesus, who already paid the price for your salvation. I encourage you to do that now. And again, remember, when you were saved, you were also simultaneously adopted into his family. And God, you cannot show me anywhere in Scripture where God says he will disown you and no longer be your father in heaven. You are his child forever. Like me, there may be times when he's maybe disturbed with you when you've let him down a few times. And yeah, there may be times that he might dis discipline you. 
But don't good parents discipline their children anyway for their own good? God is not going to disown you. He is not going to throw you out of his family. He is definitely not. Again, Ephesians 2, verse 9, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. And you trust in Jesus for your salvation. Trust in him for your salvation. He will not betray your trust. That is the overwhelming message of Scripture. I hope that answers some of the questions that you have in your mind today. Um, I encourage you, if you like these videos that I'm putting up, that you think others might profit from them. Um, more a question of, this Jim, God does speak through him. I don't know why. I don't know why. Jim is so fallible. Jim is so fallible. He really is. But the Lord does speak through him. And you think other people should profit from, could profit from watching these videos. I pray that you'll share the existence of these videos with other people that you come in contact with and or on your website and your Facebook post. This is the only way that many people can get to see these videos is if you are promoting them so that others might go to these videos and benefit from them. And if there's something that you want to see me do better or a topic that you want me to touch on, comment on it and let me know. Thank you again for your time. I pray that this has been a benefit to you. And as always, I praise the Lord. Anything that I said that was good came from God. He spoke through me. It's not me, not credit to me. All glory to God the Father. Amen.